Good morning. Applications of sequences and series. This is just an extra review with uh, six extra problems to go over to help you with this particular portion of sequences and series. Some of the things that you're going to have to do is figure out one is the application referring to an to an arithmetic or a geometric sequence or series, and then from there go ahead and solve. So this first one, the gardener plants a lily bulb at the end of the year and has four new bulbs. He plants the new bulbs the next year, they divide like the first one and he has 16 bulbs. If they continue dividing in this manner, how many bulbs will he have at the end of 10 years? Now this is a little bit confusing because it talks about dividing and what it's talking about is the bulb is dividing which means you're actually multiplying the number of plants you're going to get. So one of the easiest ways to work on this start out and say that you started out with a single bulb. In year one, you had one bulb. In year two, you had four. In year three, you had 16. And so on. And it wants to know in year 10, how many will you have? Well, if you take a look at this, it's obviously not arithmetic because I add three to one to get four. If I add three more, I'm going to get seven, not 16. Instead, I multiply each previous term by 4. That means I have a geometric sequence and my ratio is 4. My first term is 1. What I don't know is a sub 10. Now, how do I find out <clears throat> Excuse me, what a sub 10 is? Well, that means that I need to use the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which is 1, times r, which we figured out was 4, raised to the n minus 1, which would be 10 minus 1. This means that after 10 years, if it keeps on dividing, I'm going to have 4 to the ninth. And for that, you're going to need to plug it into your calculator. And you're going to find out that you have 262,144 bulbs. Okay? So again, you've got to first decide. The very first thing you do is, is it arithmetic or is it geometric? Then you need to find, figure out, is it a sequence or a series? And then you go through the whole process of what do you know, what do you need to know? Let's go on to the next one. Okay, the second one. The rungs of a ladder decrease from a width of 2 feet 4 inches at the bottom to a width of 1 foot 8 inches at the top. If there are 24 rungs, we're being asked to find the difference in length from one rung to the next, the total length of the 25 rungs. Well, the difference is pretty easy, but now Remember that the first thing we have to do is we have to have everything the same units. So we have to convert 2 feet, well, maybe, <clears throat> 2 feet, 4 inches into all inches. So that's going to be 2 times 12 plus 4. This is going to be 24 plus 4 more is 28 inches. We also need 1 foot 8 inches, and that's going to be 1 times 12 plus 8. That's going to be 20 inches. So this tells us that it goes from 28 all the way down to 20. This one, however, I've got to do this, A sub 1. Yeah, I don't know. There we go. A sub 1 is equal to my 28 inches. And then A sub 25 is equal to 20 inches. So now I want to find out the difference. Well, remember we have the formula. A sub N is equal to A sub 1 plus N minus 1 times the difference. I know my 25th one is 20 inches. My first one 
is 28. And then I've got n minus 1 times the d. And my n is 25. So now 20 is equal to 28 plus 24d. I subtract from both sides and I have negative 8 is equal to 24d. My difference is negative 1 third. Remember that negative 8 over 24 is negative 1 third. So each ladder rung decreases by one third of an inch. So the difference in length from one rung to the next is negative one third of an inch. Now, I need the total length of the 25 rungs. And here I'll put, I was finding D. Here, this is going to be a series of 25. Basically, I need to find out if I'm going to rebuild this ladder, how much material do I need to make all these rungs? So you need to pause the video, make sure that you have all of this written down because I'm going to erase it so that I can do the S sub 25. Okay, so we'll go like this. Boom. Now, if I want S sub 25, and remember this is the common difference so I know it's going to be arithmetic. That means I have 25, or n, divided by 2 times the sum of a sub 1 plus a sub 2. So s sub 25 is equal to 25 over 2 times 48 and this winds up being 600 inches or 50 feet. Okay, I just divided 600 by 12. All right, and that's that for that one. Again, if you need to, pause the video and look back over the material. Going on to the third one. A man is paying off a debt of $880 by paying $25 in the first month, $27 on the second month, $29 the third month, and so on in that pattern. How long will it take him to pay off the debt? So for this one, I know that my S sub N, the total amount being paid off, is going to be $880. That's the total I'm paying off. I also know that the first payment is $25. Then I look at 27, 29. I'm going up by 2, so I'm adding, so it's arithmetic. And my common difference is $2, okay, per month. So at this point, pause the video and see if you can figure this out, and then start the video again, and I'll go over the answer. Okay, so, now, this is where, remember that if you take <clears throat> a look at it, we have 800, maybe, $880 is equal to N, we don't know how long it's gonna take, over two, and then A sub one, plus a sub n, but we don't know what a sub n is. So what we need to do is figure out a sub n. So we know a sub n is going to be equal to 25, because that was our first payment, plus n minus 1 times 2, which is the difference. Now. Notice down here in my series formula, I have n and I have a sub n. So I have two different variables. What I'm going to do is substitute in this expression for a sub n. It's substitution. You learn this in Algebra 1. 
variable substitution. So I'm going to take and plug in 25 plus 2n minus 2 down here. So now we're going to have 880 is equal to n divided by 2 times 25 plus 25 plus n minus 1 times 2. And, okay, 880 is equal to n divided by 2. And then this gives us 50 plus 2n minus 2. I have to distribute the 2. 880 is equal to n divided by 2. This is going to be 48 plus 2n. Now when I distribute n over 2, I have 880 is equal to 24n. Okay, I'm just distributing this whole thing. And then over here, I'm going to get plus n squared. Now, I'm going to move everything to one side of the equation. And this is going to give me a quadratic. And it's okay, because you've solved quadratics before. I subtract 880, so 0 is equal to n squared plus 24n. I just used the commutative property to switch places there. And then minus the 880. Now, I'm going to factor this. I know it's going to be n and n. And I know one needs to be plus and one needs to be minus. I need two numbers that will multiply to 880 and add to positive 24. It turns out that it's 44 and 20. Now, n plus 44 is equal to 0. n equals negative 44. n minus 20 is equal to 0. n equals 20. Ah, uh, this one I can't use. Why can't I use it? I can't go negative 44 payments. However, I can do 20 payments. So 20 payments later, I will have paid off the full amount of money. All right? Good job. Moving on to the next problem. The sum of the first two terms of an infinite geometric series is 5 fourths. And the common ratio is 2 thirds. Um, hang on a second, I think. Oh, the, the sum, sorry, the sum of the first two terms is 5 fourths. And the common ratio is 2 thirds. Find the sum of the series. So, first things first, let me pick a color that will work well. So S sub 2 is equal to 5 fourths. I know my ratio is equal to 2 thirds. This tells me that this will converge. I also know that the infinite summation is equal to A sub 1 over 1 minus R. Well, I know R. Yay! I don't know A sub 1. But I do know that um, a, oops, a sub 2 will be equal to a sub 1 times r. And then I can also know that s sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r. Oops, that's an r there. Raised to the 2 because it's the n, over 1 minus r. I know s sub 2, boom. So I can say I have 5 fourths is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus 2 thirds squared is 4 ninths all over 1 minus 2 thirds. Okay, now here's where you want to be careful with all of this. We have 5 fourths is equal to 
1 minus 4 ninths is 5 ninths, or 5a over 9. All over 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third. Now, let's remember that we have 5 fourths is equal to 5a over 9 divided by 1 third. How do you handle fractions? You should all know you flip and you multiply. So you have 5 fourths is equal to 5a over 9 times 3 over 1. Now, you can cancel that. Okay, and you're going to have, oops, hang on, let me pause this so I can move it around. Sorry about that, I had to move it so I could write a little bit better. So now we have 5 fourths is equal to 5a over 3. At this point, we can cross multiply. 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5a is 20a. Dividing a is equal to 15 over 20. Oops, that's a sub 1. All of these should be a sub 1, sorry. And then 5 will go into that 3 times and into 20 4 times. So I find out that a sub 1 is equal to 3 fourths. Now I'm going to use 3 fourths in this guy up here. So we go back here. So I've got S. Oops. Let me. S sub infinity is equal to 3 fourths over 1 minus 2 thirds. That means that S sub infinity is equal, and that's going to be 1 third, so that's 3 fourths divided by 1 third. 3 fourths times 3 over 1 is 9 fourths. That's the infinite, that's the sum of the infinite series, given that the, that the sum of the first two terms is 5 fourths. Okay, and it makes sense. 9 fourths is a little bit more. Right, moving right along, we have 200 logs, it's a lot of logs, are stacked with 20 logs in the bottom row, 19 in the next, and so on. How many rows are there and how many logs are in the top row? So there's two questions that you're being asked for. Okay, how many rows are there? Okay, which, and the rows are the N, so N. We need to find out the total n. And then how many logs are in the top row? So a sub n. Well, we know that s sub n is equal to, do, 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 do. oh no, we don't know s sub n, sorry. I'm thinking of a different problem. I should probably set this up a little bit easier. We know that a sub 1 is equal to 20, a sub 2 is equal to 19, therefore d is equal to negative 1. Each row holds one less than the previous one. Okay, and we do, sorry, we do know 200 logs, so we do know s sub n. So we know that s sub n is equal to 200. Therefore, we can set this up and say that we have 200 is equal to n over 2 times 20, which is our first, ah, plus a sub n. This is where we have our little bit of a problem. So I have to say that a sub n is equal to 20 plus n minus 1 times negative 1. a sub n is equal to 20 plus negative n plus 1. I distributed the negative 1, which is 21 minus n. I'm going to take this 
and I'm going to substitute it in here. So we'll have 200 is equal to n divided by 2 times 20 plus 21 minus n. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. So I have 400 is equal to n times 41 minus n. Distribute the n. 400 is equal to 41n minus n squared. Now this time I'm going to add n squared to both sides. Subtract 41n from both sides. That leaves the 400 over here and get 0. Now when I factor this, okay, I've got an n and an n. I know I'm going to get a plus and a minus. I'm going to get, oops, not a plus and a minus. I'm going to get a minus and a minus. Maybe. So two numbers that will multiply to 400 and add to 41 are 16 and 25. Okay? Now, when I do this, I wind up finding out that n is equal to 16 or n is equal to 25. But it's not actually possible to have both of these. Okay? So, let me show you how we figure out that n is equal to 16. All right? The way we do this is we say, if we take a sub 25, and I know that that's going to be 20 plus 25 minus 1 times negative 1. Okay? If I put in the 25, a sub 25 will be equal to 20 plus, this is going to be 25 minus 1 is 24, negative 24, or a sub 25 will be equal to negative 4. It's not possible for me to have a 25th row that has negative 4 logs. Not possible. I can't have negative 4 logs. Now, Will the 16 work? It will. If I do a sub 16, I'm going to get 20 plus 16 minus 1 times negative 1. This will give me 20 plus 16 minus 1 is 15, negative 15, which will give me 5. So this says that I have 16 rows, and there are 5 logs in or on top row, whichever way you want to look at that. Okay? So the 25, while numerically it works in a sequence, it doesn't work in the application. Alright, so can't have, can't have negative 4 logs. Finally, the last extra problem that I have here, and I just put down number 7 because it happens to be number 7 from a worksheet that I was looking at. The enrollment of a certain university decreases at the rate of 3% per year. If there were 10,000 enrolled in 1957, how many students were enrolled in 1967? Okay, first off, the 3% per year is a decrease. What you have to remember is that each year, you had a certain amount, and then this year you have 97% of this year. That's a 3% decrease. That's really important. Really, really important. Because now, um, decrease 3% will mean that my R is equal to point. 97. Each year I will have 97% of what I had before. So, 19, 
57 to 1967, that's 10 years. So what I want is a sub 10. Because I'm talking about a percent of increase or decrease, I know this is geometric. And I started out with 10,000, that's my a sub 1. So there's my 10,000, a sub 1. And I'm going to multiply that by my r, which is 0.97. That's the tricky part here. Raised <clears throat> to the 10 minus 1. And at this point, use your calculator. Just plug the numbers in. And you'll find out that you have 7,602.3 students. Since you can't have a third of a student or 0.3 of a student, we say that there will be a about 7,602 students, and in reality, a lot of times you just say 7,600 because there's that margin of error. Okay? That's applications of sequences and series or some additional examples. Thanks for joining.